So this is my mill. I've only had this mill for a couple of months. I bought it brand new, and wouldn't you know it, I've already made quite a few changes to it. I didn't make changes to this because there was anything significantly wrong with it. I am super happy with this mill. I'm happy with its accuracy. I'm happy with how it works, how easy it is to use, the size of the bed. I mean, the features on this mill are amazing. But no machine tool, in my opinion, is ever perfect right out of the box. Why not take a little time, do a few things, and make some improvements? The very first improvement I made to this, I actually ordered the parts to make this improvement before the mill ever came. And that was to replace the Quill DRO. Now, I don't get any credit for this. The reason I knew what parts to order is because Blondie Hacks, who has the same mill, did all the work. She's got a fantastic video on replacing this DRO it covers the reasons why it's a good idea to replace the DRO. It provides a part number for this DRO. And I'm not going to tell you anything about it because really, you should go watch her video. It's an outstanding video. I would not have been able to replace this without it. And so go check that out. Second thing, also from Blondie Hacks, she discovered that the mount that connects the quill to the DRO was flexing, and this was creating two or three thousandths variance in the reading. In other words, this bracket would move and flex, and it would show up on the DRO with as much as a three thousandths variance. Blondie Hack's solution, being the amazing machinist that she is, was to take a piece of aluminum and machine a whole new bracket. But as I've said many times, I am a fabricator, not a machinist. So could I follow Blondie Hack's lead and machine a new bracket? Absolutely. But since I'm a fabricator, we're going to fabricate. And all that involves is adding gussets to the original bracket. So here we have the original bracket. It spent a little time in my sandblasting cabinet to get all the paint off. When I mounted up my Quill DRO, I actually used the mounts that came with the DRO rather than drilling holes in the magnetic scale. And I was able to do that by drilling these two holes there on the side. Now those are very close to the edge and we are going to have to keep those in mind when we add the gussets. Because these gussets that I fabricated will be welded to either side. Now, I'm sure you're looking at that going, that hole is way too close and you're never going to get a nut in there. And you are completely correct. The way I'm going to fabricate this up is we are actually going to tilt this side piece and then fill the gap with weld. Now, that gap's huge and that's way bigger than what I'm actually going to be doing. I just did that for demonstration purposes. It'll actually probably be somewhere in that range. I made these gussets simply by cutting them out on the bandsaw, and then I shaped them by hitting them lightly with my benchtop sander. So all I need to do is take these out to the welder, get them tacked into place, adjust the angle so that I have plenty of room for the nut, then tack them again, do a test fit, and then once I do that, it's just a matter of doing stitch welds because this is such thin metal to get everything tied together. And the reality of it is, I probably don't need to completely weld the seam. I could probably get away with just doing a few welds and that's totally gonna hold because all we're doing is stiffening this up. It's not seeing tons of force or torque. But if I know me, I'm probably gonna go through and completely weld the whole thing. And just like that, we have it tacked and boxed in. I now have room for the nuts on the backside. All I have to do now is go through and stitch weld it all together, and then I'll go back over to the bench sander and clean things up just a little bit. So there it is, all stitch welded together and then roughly cleaned up on the bench sander. With stitch welds, it's kind of hard to get a really pretty weld because you're doing a weld and then going a ways down and doing a weld and going a ways down. So where any welds meet, 
you tend to get a little bit of excess buildup and it requires you to grind things smooth. But it's a great technique for avoiding warpage and that kind of thing. I'm going to take this over to the Scotch-Brite wheel and we will get this buffed up. And then from there, it's just a simple test fit. Eventually, I will get it painted and finished up. But for the moment, my biggest concern is getting it cleaned up and then getting it back on the mill so that I can use the mill in the short term. It's amazing what you can do with a Scotch-Brite wheel. I've got it all cleaned up. I normally don't like grinding on welds because it weakens them. But while this piece will be seeing some force, it's not really a structural piece. And so cleaning it up and getting everything smoothed out doesn't really hurt anything in this application. Here I have taken the mount that came with the Quill DRO and attached it to the bracket that I gusseted. Now I'm sure you're looking right here because I keep talking about this DRO and you're looking at that going, that doesn't look factory, or if it is factory, what the heck happened to the chrome? This is upgrade number two. Normally, this comes with this small dial for fine feed. When I'm running the mill, I don't really like using the quill arm for fast feed for using it more like a drill press. I have a drill press for that purpose. So I don't often use these three arms. That means the majority of my height adjustments are done right here. And if you're using a small knob, that knob is in place, that's a whole lot of cranking to get it up and down. But with this, I have a whole lot more speed. I can get the kind of quick plunging that I would get with this without having to have my hand over here working that. Now this came off of my lathe. It was on the main lead screw on my mill lathe combo machine for years. And then when I replaced the lead screws on that machine, it actually became the fine adjustment for my DIY mill. Now that that DIY mill is becoming a DIY surface grinder, I no longer needed this arm on that. So I machined this standoff that uses a set screw to attach to the shaft, same way this knob worked. And then there is a roll pin holding it to the piece that I machined because that's how this was designed to be mounted on the lead screw that it had been on. What's really nice about this arm is it gives me more distance. In other words, with this original knob, if I rotated it one inch of travel, we've moved about a quarter of a turn. But because this is longer, the circle diameter has gotten bigger and one inch of movement is roughly an eighth of a turn. So basically it's easier for me to fine tune the position. Some mills come with a hand wheel in that position, but usually when that's the case, it's up here or down here, someplace that's out of the way of the DRO. So in this application, a hand wheel will not work. But this armature off of the lead screw of my original lathe is kind of the best of both worlds. It allows me to crank it and get the speed. It allows me to get the fine adjustment. And it also minimally blocks the readout on the DRO. Even if it's right like that, completely covering it, I can look around the ball and see where my readings are at. Whereas if there was a huge wheel here, that would be a whole lot harder. Third upgrade I made to this machine was to install Z-axis power feed. And that's that right there. What I really like about this Z-axis power feed is I did it with salvaged parts. There's an entire video on this build. It shows you everything that went into putting this treadmill incline motor on this mill as a Z-axis power feed. It works very simply. I've got master power, which applies power to the cooling fan that I installed, as well as runs power to this momentary switch. And then from there, I can hit the switch to go up. I can hit the switch to go down. As Soon as I let off, it stops moving. I find that a treadmill incline motor is a natural choice for this type of application. 
It runs on AC, so you don't have to have any kind of AC to DC converter. It's got lots of torque, so it goes up and down without breaking a sweat. And it's about the perfect speed. I mean, that just moves nice and smooth. It's not so fast that the wheel's spinning out of control. I can easily take this from all the way to the top to all the way to the bottom in a reasonable amount of time, but it's not so fast that the mill is unhappy. The fourth thing that I did to upgrade this mill was to add power feed to the bed. There's also an entire video on that. And the reason there's an entire video on that is because I did not install this in the typical way you install power feed on a mill like this. Normally, you have this bracket right here which fits into this slot and clamps down. That limits your ability to get T-nuts out. That shortens your bed because now this bracket is hanging over the edge. So I designed a bracket that mounts in between the power feed and the bed, allowing me to retain this opening to get out my T-nuts, making it a nice solid mount and what I think is a far superior installation. If you want more details on that, make sure you check out that video. The last and final upgrade that I made to this machine, and when I say final upgrade, it's final upgrade for this video. The last thing I hated was the way the dials on all the hand wheels were locked into place. So here we have the hand wheel, and from the factory we have this little screw-in knob to set the dial. I don't like this for a couple of reasons. I don't like the screw binding into the aluminum body that this hand wheel has. I don't like the fact that it sticks out. That's going to catch stuff. And really, it's not the best way to do this. Pretty much every lathe and mill everywhere comes with a dial, and this is the only one I've seen that's using this little thread-in insert to allow it to be adjustable but hold a position. Most of the time, you have some sort of tensioning mechanism inside the dial that is keeping everything in place. In the really cheap ones, it's just as simple as an O-ring. A greased O-ring that's been fitted into the groove that creates just enough tension that you can move it around but is not so tight that it locks it into place to where you can't spin it. Some of the nicer ones actually have a piece of spring steel inside, just like that right there. And that is what we're going to do here. So if I unscrew this, you can see it just flops around. You can spin it. And we go ahead and put this little piece of spring steel right there. Now, it's not very big. And then we gently slide this back in. Now, this is where things get a little more interesting. You do have to push down as you're sliding it on. But once you get it started, again, there's not a lot of pressure there because this piece of spring steel is so short. And now we slide it into place. And if I turn that, there is about the perfect amount of drag on that. It's a really simple modification, especially since there's a good chance you already have the spring steel required to make this happen. That right there is a piece of the strap that was strapped around my mill when it came to me from the factory. I have taken it over to the bench sander and cleaned up one end. And all we're going to do is lop off a piece a little more than a quarter inch thick. And then we're going to take it back to the bench sander and clean it up. What's nice about this is, yes, it's a, a mild spring steel, but it's not so hard that it's hard to work with. You can actually cut this with a pair of metal shears. Then you can easily shape it on the bench sander as long as you're making sure that you're not getting too much heat into it. So let's go ahead and lop that off. Now these little pieces tend to try and go shooting when you cut them at the very end. That one didn't because it stayed connected. When I'm working this on the bench sander, I typically just put it in a pair of vice grips, but I have it 
really light. It's not so tight that it's going to mar into this steel. It's just enough to be able to hold it so that I can easily work it and so that I don't burn my fingers. So we'll take this over to the sander. We'll actually make it a little bit thinner. So this direction, so from this corner to this corner, we'll actually work this edge down so that it's smaller than the groove inside the hand wheel. We're gonna take and round the corners off. And then from there, we're going to make sure that all the corners are polished and rounded. We're gonna do that on a Scotch-Brite wheel. And the reason we do that is we do not want this cutting into any part of this hand wheel. We don't want it to cut into the steel dial and we don't want it to cut into the aluminum body. I absolutely love this tool. This is supposed to be for woodworking. It is a bench top belt sander. It's got a round wheel on this side and but more often than not, I'm actually using the belt on this side. This will eat through a whole lot of metal in a really big hurry and it was not super expensive. I'm not trying to sell you one of these. I'm not getting any kickbacks from Porter Cable or anything like that. But I'm just here to tell you this is one of my go-to machines in the shop. And just like that, we have it shaped. It's significantly skinnier this direction, and the corners have been ever so slightly rounded off. I will finish rounding those with the Scotch-Brite. And just like that, one small piece of spring steel that we can now fit into the hand wheel made from something that came with this mill. And it works really super well. I can't stress enough that I am extremely happy with this mill. This could have been a mill that was twice as expensive and twice as nice, and I probably still would have made modifications because, well, that's who I am and that's what I do. I also want to throw this out there yet again that the quill dro upgrade and finding that the issue with it being off a few thousandths was tied directly to the bracket all that credit goes to blondie hacks i highly recommend you get over there and check out her channel she's got great information on this dro install and machining a nice new bracket She's also got fantastic information for basic mill and basic lathe skills. If you want to improve your ability to run a machine like this, that's where you need to go. If you have any questions on these modifications, or if there's something else you'd like to see me modify, go ahead and throw that down in the comments, and who knows, maybe that will be my next video. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.